Thanks, Jim. Um, <clears throat> so there may be some overlap between my talk and your talk, Jim, and, and even Brian a little bit, but I, th I think the issue that we're trying to get at here is, is one is non-surgical therapy reasonable, um, and I think it's a difficult question. So early stage lung cancer, clearly surgery, I would say, is still the gold standard with a lymph node dissection. I think these other therapies have some interest, um, but I don't think they've shown themselves equal at this point. And um, SABR is what I think most people call SBRT now. Uh, and I'm not going to get into that since Brian covered it, but I'll talk a little bit about RFA, microwave, cryo, and irreversible electroporation, or IRE. Uh, full disclosure, I don't do any of them, but um, a couple of our guys do do RFA um, using image guidance uh, like they do at Pittsburgh and other places, um, and I've talked with them about it, but I'm going to go mostly by the literature. So what, what makes this relevant is we're picking up these smaller cancers uh, much more frequently. CTs are done in our hospital. If you sneeze and you're in the emergency ward, you get a CT of your chest. Um, there's more ground glass and parts all lesions being picked up, and I think that's partly because we're doing a lot of scans, but partly there's a change in histopathology. There's improved resolution and sensitivity of imaging, so we're finding really small lesions. Um, and I do believe that the least invasive, I would say instead of minimally invasive, I call least invasive surgical techniques now have great outcomes. Um, and, and you heard one of them, and that patient Brian just mentioned, uh, high risk, got a great outcome with a VATS lobe. And I think that's more and more the case. But also, there's more non-surgical options. People are living longer, cancer's a disease of the elderly, so we're being faced with 85-year-old people with some comorbidities with small lesions. And that's what makes all this relevant, I think. What are the non-radiation ablative options? I mentioned them already. RFA's probably got the biggest track record. Um, and then there's newer ones, such as microwave, cryo, and this other new one called IRE. The Rapture trial is, is a good trial to talk about. It was a prospective uh, trial done uh, and published in 2008 in Lancet Oncology. 106 patients, tumors were less than or equal to three and a half centimeters. About a third of them were primary lung cancer. All of them had biopsies. All were considered unfit for any treatment, surgery, chemo, radiation. One of the patients was unable to have an RFA as the probe could not be placed in the lesion. There were no procedure-related deaths. The major complications were mostly pneumothoraces in about a quarter and then four effusions. These are the outcomes. Uh, there was a complete response seen at one year in 88% of, of the accessible patients, 75 of 85. There was no difference in the response rates for primary lung cancer versus metastatic disease. And for non-small cell lung cancer, you can see the overall survival and cancer-specific survival at one year was 70%, at um, uh, two years was 48% overall, cancer-specific 92 and 73 just suggesting these people were dying of other problems, as you might predict. For stage one cancer, and there were only 13 cases in this trial, it was a 75% two-year survival, 92% uh, was cancer-specific. Um, of interest, it, you know, the stage one cancers lived longer. I don't know if they had less comorbidity, but, you know, they died overall of a, of a different reason, uh, which is interesting. Pulmonary function was no different at a year. So they concluded RFA was safe and effective. And if you look at uh, Jim's trial uh, or experience that was published the next year in the annals, they, they looked at 100 patients, 40 men, 60 women, about 74 years of age. Half were primary lung cancer, a quarter were recurrent cancer, and almost uh, another quarter to a third were pulmonary metastases. The median survival was two years at a median fo mean follow-up of 17 months. And you can see broken down by type Two-year survival for primary lung cancer was 50%, for recurrent cancer was 55%, and metastatic cancer was 41%. I'm sure we'll hear more detail about that, so I'll, I'll leave it at that. But the conclusion was that it's a safe and, re and it gets reasonable outcomes uh, done by surgeons using image guidance. Here's, uh, I, I, I'm not leaving it with that. I'm having one more slide. Here's the table from that. And this is the reason people were considered um, uh, high risk. 
mostly because of lung function, uh, increased cardiac risk, failing other therapies, uh, multiple comorbidities, uh, they, a few refused surgery, and they had a very high uh, Charleston comorbidity index. This is the survival curve from that paper. The AXOG trial came out last year by Damien Dupuy and Chris Fernando and others, um, uh, Z4033, medically inoperable patients with early stage cancer, multicenter prospective trial, 54 patients were enrolled or registered, 25 men, 29 women. Again, all these trials have more women than men, uh, which is of interest. Age 76, 16 U.S. centers. Turns out 51 turned out to be eligible. And the PFT data within 60 days, three and 24 months uh, was measured, and I'll show you that in a minute. They were all followed by CT and PET scan, and the endpoint was most, mostly the endpoint was local control and recurrence. Here's the data from that trial. The overall survival at one year was 86%. At two years was 69.8%. The local tumor recurrence-free survival was 69% at one year and 60% at two years. And, it, and the outcomes were worse for tumors greater than two centimeters. 19 patients had local recurrence. 11 were retreated with RFA again. Nine had radiation therapy and three were treated with chemo. 90-day toxicity, 21 out of 51 grade 3, 2 out of 51 or 4% grade 4, and about a 2% grade 5. And their, their uh, note in the paper was oh, four, the grade 4s and 5s were not attributable to the RFA treatment. There was no change in FEV1 or DLCO after RFA, which I think is important to note it. Uh, tumors less than 2 centimeters and with good performance status were associated with better survival. 83% for small tumors at two years and 78% at two years for uh, better um, performance status. So their conclusion was RFA is comparable to SBRT or SABR. What about cryoablation? Um, 47 patients in this uh, group of patients that were reported on with early stage non-small cell lung cancer. 45 consecutive patients over five years were uh, reported. Uh, all procedures were uh, done using a 16-gauge or 13-gauge cryoprobe, and the number depended on the size and the geometry of the tumor, but averaged 1.4 probes per centimeter of tumor diameter. The five-year survival was 68 percent. Cancer-specific survival was 57 percent. Local and regional recurrence rate was about a third. Major complications in 6.4 percent, two cases of significant hemoptysis, and two cases of prolonged chest tube drainage. There was no 30-day mortality. The conclusion from that uh, study was that it's a safe and maybe curative uh, procedure for early non-small cell lung cancer. This is pictures from their paper. This is showing a good response. Here's the lesion, uh, and there it is there. This is a case of a, a recurrence, uh, and that's, that's the same lesion, after, another lesion after treatment. This is a lesion that was treated, and this is uh, a recurrence where the PET lights up the corner of it. And uh, they, in that case, they thought they didn't get the probe in the right place. What about microwave ablation? This was published in uh, uh, AJR this year. 230 CT-guided ablations, 109 patients uh, over 14 years. They used both laser-induced thermal therapy in 21, radio frequency ablation in 41 patients, microwave ablation in 47 patients, and they followed them up at 3, 6, 12, 18, and 24 months. Here are the results. Local tumor control uh, was 68, 69, and 88 percent favored uh, microwave. Time to local progression, however, was uh, not statistically different, 10, 7, and 7 and a half months. And the median survival was not statistically different at 22, 24, and 32.8 months. So the conclusion they drew was that um, all of those therapies are reasonable, that microwave had better local tumor control. We heard a little bit about it at lunch uh, today, and uh, it does seem of interest. Uh, other papers I looked at showed microwave got a little bit better uh, local control than these other uh, therapies, but smaller, earlier, er, earlier data than some of the RFA data. What about this other technique, IRE? Um, 
the trial is called the Alice trial, interesting name for a trial, um, but it's used in liver with good results. But for lung, primary and secondary lung cancer, they looked at it for, at lung function and safety and efficacy. Uh, it was given under general anesthesia with a probe placement using fluoro CT. The system they used was called NanoKnife or made by AngioDynamics and their expected efficacy was not met, so the trial was stopped early after 23 patients. Most of them had colorectal metastases at 13 patients, and the average tumor size was 16 millimeters in that, in that uh, trial. There was pneumothoraces in 11 out of 23 that were treated with chest tubes in eight of them. They frequently saw alveolar hemorrhage, but it never led to significant hemoptysis. Uh, about over half the patients, 60%, had progressive disease. One, out of the one of the patients had stable disease, one had a partial remission, and there were complete remissions in uh, 30%. Uh, the increase in the current during ablation was higher in the successful group versus those who developed a local recurrence. And needle tract seeding was seen in about uh, 10 to 15% of the patients. Their theory as to why it wasn't as effective as they'd hoped was that energy deposition is sensitive to air exposure and prevents the, the delivery the way they wanted it to be done. So um, in summary, I would say patients who are not candidates for surgery and have relatively small tumors that aren't adjacent to large blood vessels or airways are candidates for ablative technology. And I'll certainly ask Jim and others whether they have data about cryo or microwave being used closer to these big vessels, because that's currently the bugaboo area, right? It's peripheral tumors we can all deal with various ways. It's the small central tumors that are the tricky ones to deal with for the reasons that we've talked about. RFA microwave ablation and cryoablation all have reasonable outcomes at early time points. And how do you move forward with respect to SABR and sublobar resections remains to be seen. But in general, if surgery is an option, I would say it's the first choice. If surgery is not an option, uh, for example, it's a small central tumor and the patient can't tolerate a lobectomy, do you do a Perlman procedure? Do you do RFA? Do you do cryo? I think that's going to be uh, an important thing to discuss in the discussion. But I do think all of these treatments have value and, 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 and do have local control rates that aren't aren't too bad. And the one thing I didn't point out is you can, uh, I mentioned in one of the studies, you can retreat. So with that, I'll stop and uh, let Jim talk. Thank you.